Joining us right now on the Honda Insider Report is a man who hopefully, uh, I, I, I know he speaks fluent Jerry Jones, so let's decide mm -hmm. for the comments. Tim Kalashaw from the Dallas Morning News and also from Around the Horn back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Tim? I'm good. I'm, it's hard to speak fluent, Jerry. I've been trying for 30 years, but it's a difficult language. So interpret his comments post-game for us, please. Well, th these, these weren't that difficult. I mean, it's, it's funny that a four-point loss to the Patriots is where he sounds most uh, damaging towards Jason's future chances. Not a loss to the Jets, not a loss at home to the Packers where Aaron Rodgers didn't have any receivers, but this game. But, but I mean, I think he – it was a culmination, and the the plays you just talked about, the Tony Pollard one on the kickoff is the one that I think frustrates him, and that's really the one that's about coaching because you can debate the fourth and seven decision. Um, I, I didn't think that was that terrible given that you've just gone incomplete on second and seven and third and seven, but, but, I, but I understand, you know, you're down there, and I understand the argument, <clears throat> excuse me, argument for getting the touchdown, but Belichick watches his guy, Matt Patricia, play. He watches the Detroit tape from last week. And Detroit with vastly inferior players, but the same approach as the Patriots. And he sees Pollard dropping a kickoff at the 10, not really good at handling that. That's indoors in Detroit. <clears throat> so they're going to try to mess with him in the weather. And the Cowboys are completely unprepared for it. And I think that's what, that's what Jones was talking about, is special teams is coaching. And, and one team was – fully coached and prepared and the other one went there hoping to get a win well i think maybe and again you're right i mean again th th this defense <laughs> is maybe one of the best defenses we've ever seen that's a fact and the place where they're playing is one of the toughest road venues to win in that maybe we've ever seen this is now 20 straight wins for the patriots in gillette uh including playoffs but this is the litmus test, right? This is the litmus test of, of a team that will have to be somewhat reconfigured in the whole there is more pie, there is less pie front when Dak does eventually get either franchise tagged or signed long term. The window is closing with five more regular season games, and maybe he just saw it right there in person in front of him that a game that was winnable when it all came down to it was not because of decision-making and preparedness, Tim. Yeah, I, I think that all goes into it. I, I just think they look that way on a regular basis. Uh, Jason Garrett was asked today, I, I, this morning, I guess, about uh, does he uh, talk to anybody about win probabilities and use those stats? And he said, no, we don't do that in a game. Well, you probably read that story about John Harbaugh has a 25-year-old win probability expert sitting in the, in the press box next to the offensive coordinator telling him on those downs, what works and what the percentages are. And, and, but that's so not Garrett to do things like that. He, he, he desperately wants to be an old school football coach coming from his dad, who was a scout. And he doesn't want to, I've written before about the Princeton side of his personality is like Spock. And he wants to shove that aside and just be a football guy and, and doesn't want to hear about analytics and doesn't want to hear about numbers and probability. And, and sometimes th those things teach you a lot in the middle of a game, and Cowboys have, have no clue about all that. So what do you think Jerry's going to do, Tim? I, I don't think anything immediate. I know there's people thinking, like they thought a couple weeks ago, oh, they lose to Buffalo and he's going to do it Friday. And I, I don't think there's anybody natural to promote. I don't think the, the, uh, the shine on Chris Richard is that – bright right now so i mean i think he i think he, it's always going to come down to the playoffs look you know the cowboys might go eight and eight and win the division you saw the eagles yesterday uh if they go nine and seven they're almost certainly going to win the division and get a home playoff game but then they got to then they got to beat san francisco or seattle probably at home and then they got to go win on the road to get to that elusive nfc championship and it's it's hard to see that happening, so I think we will have a coaching change. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I again, uh, Tim, I was talking about at the top of the show, um, I was in the Superdome, and we had Jerry Jones on the set on NFL Network on our pregame show uh, mm -hmm. when Wade was on the hottest of hot seats, and he just did not want to fire him. He just wanted nothing to do with firing a guy we liked or he believed with this team was the team that he needed. Um, and they beat the Saints. They beat the Saints uh, in a Superdome, and the Saints hadn't lost a game at all that year. 
And I just seeing that that's the guy that clearly didn't want to make a change in the middle of the season when he eventually did the very next one. All that said, I don't see him making one midseason, but I do see that even, uh, you know, short of, as you pointed out, the elusive NFC championship game, a change is coming. Uh, where do you think he looks? Is, is Lincoln Riley is an obvious name that's thrown out there? Is the obvious the most likely in your mind? I, I, I think it is if Lincoln Riley wants to do it. And we had him on, and I, I'm sure you and everybody else has talked to him, and he always says the same thing. I'm not interested in the NFL right now. Um, at some point, he's going to run out of Heisman-type quarterbacks to transfer into Oklahoma <laughs> and, and, and want to do – you know, something else. Um, I think that would be the first choice. And even with that, I mean, we don't know, uh, you know, a college coach is really good at coaching quarterbacks. I mean, that probably makes sense given that you got Dak Prescott, but, but they might have a decent, some decent voices around Dak right now anyway. So I, I always think a, a guy in the NFL who's done it up there, um, uh, makes more sense. Now, I don't, I don't know who that is at this point. I, you know, I, at what point does, does Jim Harbaugh fall out of Michigan and come back to the NFL? I'm not sure. It just, I think Lincoln's the first choice. And then after that, it could be anywhere from, from any coordinator you want to name to Jason Witten. Jason Witten. Really? I think, I think that's always a possibility. If Jerry truly believes all the players are in place, some of these assistants, maybe not the special teams coach today, some of these assistants are pretty good, but a different voice, uh, you know, and a, and a more fiery personality is what this team needs. I could see him doing that. I don't think it's the smartest thing in the world, but I know a lot of people think it could happen. Wow. Tim Kalashaw, the Dallas Morning News here on the Rich Eisen Show. And it is remarkable how Dak has played this year, Tim. I mean, he really has shined. Uh, I know yesterday was a tough one, but again, New England has made every quarterback look pedestrian, not named Lamar Jackson this year. The weather was dreadful. Uh, Amari Cooper was erased by Stephon Gilmore and uh, all of that. Just the way he's performed without a long-term contract. Why is he not signed? Can you walk me through why he has not been signed to a long-term I, contract? I think he just made the ultimate um you know, roll of the dice on himself, thinking all these people like me who said, well, he, well, he shouldn't get as much as Carson Wentz, maybe close to it. <laughs> he shouldn't get as much as Jared Goff, maybe close to it. All of us have been at the moment proven wrong right now. He's playing a hell of a lot better than either one of those. And the notion of something averaging 30 million a year seems long gone. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be Russell, Russell Wilson's numbers or, or more. Dak just, I mean, he, he's he certainly got lots of confidence. And he has lots of confidence in the team. And from his standpoint, the, the one loss record aside, he has won that battle. He's going to get an enormous deal. And as you said earlier, at some point, they can't just pay everybody uh, a pre. You know, they went and gave Jalen Smith more than they needed to. Gave DeMarcus plenty, probably gave Zeke more than they should have. Hmm. And now they're going to pay Dak at that level. You, you, they're never going to be able to pay a secondary because that's where they're not spending money. And, and that's hurting him some. But he, he, he rolled the dice, and he is, he is coming up a big winner. So um, finish this sentence for me. I very rarely uh, ask the questions this way, but I think this is the best way to answer it and uh, wrap up our Honda Insider Report with you, Tim Kalashaw, Dallas Morning News, as well as Around the Horn. Uh, finish this sentence for me. The Dallas Cowboys are six and five because. Oh, Dallas Cowboys are six and five because uh, they never surprise their opponents, and they 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 play to their own level, and they don't. The when they play a good team, this is a long wordy sentence, and we've already got several comments. I'm sorry. It's all good. Uh, when they play good teams, they they just go out and expect. Let's go practice hard and play hard and not do anything with real imagination and see if we can beat him. And yesterday I thought was a prime example of that. Well, I mean, I thought Kellen Moore was supposed to fix all that, Tim, right? Well, he did against Miami and Washington and New York. Didn't you see those games? I did. I did, I did. I did see that. He was brilliant. 
<laughs> and then uh, I got to tell you, good team. Hey, and he look, looks a lot like other coordinators. And I know that our conversation began with you saying that you didn't take that much issue with kicking the field goal to make it a four point game as opposed to trying to tie the game on the spot with their best field position of the day on fourth and seven. And you said they had just gone incomplete two straight times. The reason why they were in second and seven to begin with was I, I could not believe they ran the option, Tim. I could not believe. Did they think that they were going to try and just shock the Patriots or trick them, uh, you know, as opposed to just let's take Zeke and hand the ball to him twice and see right. how close we can get to the goal line for two shots from, say, the the, the six or five yard line. I don't understand it. The, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, it was, I mean, uh, yeah, no, and, wow. and I think I'm in the mi minority in saying I, I didn't mind that. I think most people wanted him to, and you heard Troy doing it, yeah. saying they should have gone for the touchdown and you've got an opportunity. Uh, but I, I would just say the play calling that led up to fourth and seven, that wasn't all world either. Tim, thanks for the time. We'll chat with you down the road and uh, greatly appreciate it. Appreciate it, Rich. Take care. You got it. At Tim Kalashaw, you can follow him on Twitter. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.